typical Microsoft, Cloudflare, and Mastodon, and an eyewitness account of Apple's Super Bowl halftime show. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide ensures only secure devices can access your cloud apps. It's zero trust, tailor-made for Okta. Book a demo today at collide.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the panel finally finished off their Apple App Store monopoly debate before looking at some typical Microsoft moves, talking about Cloudflare and Mastodon, and then getting an eyewitness account of the buildup and teardown of Apple's Super Bowl halftime show. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Jim, I'm sitting here listening to some of your your comments about the App Store and and everyone else's, and it strikes me that these are, a lot of these are the very same complaints, issues that you have with physical stores, physical goods, um, services rendered by humans. You know that it, it just and and to the Chat GPT point, I mean, there's going to be. Well, here's a quick example. I think a couple weeks ago, or maybe it's just a week ago, that we had um, we had a Chat GPT discussion, and Jeff and I forget who else did um, their their bios, and you know, and talked about them. And I specifically, you know, I start I started when I was starting to edit those shows. I was going to take those and put them in to the show notes so folks could read them. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that because that's just contributing to the junk out there that might show up in yet another search. So I intentionally, you know, when Jeff was quoting his, yeah, somebody's going to have to listen to it because I'm not going to put the text there and let a search engine crawl it and then have inaccurate information out there about Jeff Gamut on the web and somebody doesn't go to see that this was postured as an incorrect uh, chat GPT ex- example, you know, it just says that Jeff is, you know, vice president of God or something, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a big job. Chuck, yeah. what, I, what, I, what I was saying about not being able to find an app by, a, you know, like say I want to do the, some task. I, I, I really don't mean that as a criticism of the app store, um, because I think that's just a difficult problem. That's not solved period. Um, you know, mm-hmm. as I, as I said, Google doesn't do it. Um, maybe Amazon a little bit. Sometimes I can do a search on Amazon to find something. Um, uh, although there, you know, a lot of times I'll, you know, for some reason discover some project that, product on Amazon that I would never even occur to search for. Like, oh my gosh, that product, you know, I didn't even know, that, you know, there was such a product, <laughs> uh, you know, how, how convenient. So, hey, you know, what I would just like to ask for out of Apple's App Store search is, you know, if I search for a name and a developer, like, you know, like say I put in the developer name, I would like to be able to see just the apps from that developer, please. You know, don't show me a a bunch of other stuff. I want to, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this developer. Please show me only that developer's apps. That's all I'm asking. Um, okay, so you're not going to like this answer, but um, it used to be, I haven't really tried this recently, but don't the listings always have a link to the developer's website? Once I found it. You yeah, know, but let's, the, let's say I hear but, about an app on a podcast and, you know, I'm listening to a podcast and they're like, oh, you know, yeah, this app's, this is a cool app, you know. So basically, unless I go back and find the podcast and hope that they put a link, you know, but if I just go to the app store and search for that, the app that they mentioned on the podcast, chances are good. I won't find it. Where I was going with that though, is that, isn't it? I mean, I think it would be incumbent to some degree to have um, a developer, you know, have a website that if, if they're so hot to communicate with their customers, that would list all the apps they offer. And then maybe links back to them on the Apple on the Apple site. But, hey, Web brought up one thing that I want. I, I, there's other things I want to get to before we cancel out of here. But Web brought up a really interesting point, and that is SetApp as a distribution platform. 
Web, where were you going with that? Are you thinking about that as a curated list, or are you talking about what they charge, or are their their compensation model for the developers, or what? I, I I have no idea what the compensation model for the developers is, so so I I have no comment on that. Uh, here again, that's something that that uh, other people would have much more. I I just thought it was interesting uh, as a platform that it, it's it's very narrowed down. Um, now, granted, some of it is self promotion for their own products, and and I accept that. Uh, but uh, it, it's. Uh, you know, we were talking about how difficult it is. I'll, I'll give you a really good example. I, I spoke on here oh, a couple, three months ago that I used a program called eyeglasses to help control my webcam. And it caused all kinds of problems and it didn't play nice with Zoom. And, and one of the things that, that uh, as our uh, Mac Voices Live uh, commentary went, our discussion went, they said, try webcam settings. And I go to, oh, I lost it here. Bear with me. So I go to the app store. I got webcam settings. I got webcam setting. Uh, and then some next ago webcam settings. I, th there are just so many different tools. And it gets to be the, the problem with trying to find the, uh, the app that I'm looking for. Set app, it just kind of helps narrow it down. It, uh, there, there's a mail order catalog called Hammaker Schlemmer. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. There's a, they have a store in New York. Does it still exist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but part of their deal, uh, if you buy something from them, uh, lifetime returns or lifetime guarantee, uh, and they do a lot. They have a Hammaker Schlemmer Institute that that it's kind of like their own version of uh, uh, Underwriters Laboratory, if you will. Um, and and if, if Setup had, had that kind of deal, where, where I get the 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 safety in knowing that that it's a, a verified and tested and it's a great product and it's very limited, as opposed to the App Store, which, like I said, on webcam settings, I got five choices with the, with this pretty much the same name. So that that's the, my only comment uh, is. Uh, uh, the setup provides some safety or some comfort or, or helps narrow down and sort through some of the, the, the crap, if you will, that's, that's on the app store and tries to get, you know, the best of the best. I'm not saying set apps app. I'm just, the, I'm talking about the concept and not, not the, the brand. So. Well, <laughs> just, I have set up and, you know, if I'm looking for something on the Mac, that's the first place I'll go. Because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because they they do have a, a nice selection, and you know, and if it's in there, then I'm already you know I can get it for nothing, and it's real easy to install. And, and they have standards yeah, and, for what they allow in. Yeah, the and setup I have program. pretty good confident confidence that you know there's there's definitely not any scam, but you know that's not you know Apple can't do that model because uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and well, one they, thing that yeah. I think has changed, there used to be, um, you know, Apple used to have a, there a way you could do affiliate links into the app store. Um, mm -hmm. they stopped and, that. and they stopped that. But, you know, so that, that used to help with discovery because other people could make curated lists, basically. And, 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 and it gave a reason, you know, for people to make investments and in things like reviews and stuff like that. And, now there's you know there's no no reason you know somebody makes a review well they you know they're doing it because you know they they want to or they're you know but you know so that all went away so I think that that made made it uh, that was not a good move on Apple's part I don't think I, the the only thing I'll say about setup I mean first of all setup does a terrific job and but oh yeah. Uh, but are they, you know are they a monopoly? Because you can't just put your app in setup. You have to apply to put it in. You have to agree to their terms of service and their compensation model. So it's just know, like a that... department store. <laughs> well, it's just you know. like the app store. Yeah. No, so it's, it's not because okay, you know, let's just talk about them as a Mac distribution platform. Right. There are multiple ways. You know, you don't have to go through setup. You know, as a developer, you don't have to go through setup to distribute your Mac app. Um, you can go in the Mac app store. You can go in setup. You can just set up a website. Do and it say, independently. Yeah. 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 Download 
download here. So, you know, there, there's absolutely nothing monopolistic about it. I mean, you know, you know, not everyone agrees that the iOS app store is monopolistic because they don't control every app for every platform. So for sure, you know, some app store that, you know, is not even control one platform is not going to be a monopoly. My, my problem with using the monopoly analogy is that um, a true monopoly is going to keep all the revenue for themselves. Whereas the apps where they do distribute revenue to the de- to the developers, it's seventy percent. But at least that's that's why I have a problem with using the the monopoly. I, I think there's it's not an oligopoly, and I talked about the monarchy a little bit, but it's something. I don't think it's truly a, a monopoly, though. Who says it? I, I never heard of a definition of a monopoly as they get all the revenue. That that's not the definition of a monopoly. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Wild Web is... All right, Wild crap Web just got checking. real. I'm going to go make some popcorn. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Wild Web's looking up Monopoly. Um, and speaking of Monopoly, um, there are a couple of things I wonder. These are almost PSAs in some ways. Um, in other ways, uh, so whoever said that our favorite nemesis is Elon Musk, no, it's not. Um <laughs> Microsoft, after three years of the M1 chip being out there and wowing everybody, has finally decided to uh, develop a, a version of Skype for the M1. Congratulations, Microsoft. Way to, way to uh, get Welcome it done to in time. 2020. Yeah. It, it yeah. went along with uh, them finally getting rid of Internet Explorer on, on Windows. That's, <laughs> that has finally ended as of today. <laughs> oh, really? Is it? it yes. I, just was they, just was trying. I was trying. The latest version of the of the Microsoft Edge on the, on Windows 10 is going to disable Internet Explorer. It'll automatically redirect it to Edge. So they did that on Valentine's Day. So they did the Saint Valentine's Day massacre for Internet Explorer. I like it. Yeah. I yes. like it. Um, the other thing, though, this just this just hurts my brain. Microsoft is about to retire Teams free. Okay, so they put it out there. They get people hooked on it. And then they remove the version, except that there will be another new version of Teams Free, but you have to sign up for it, and apparently you have to download your files off of the old Teams Free to do the new Teams Free. I, I mean, th- you can't make this stuff up. You just you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because uh, because we're talking about this like it's news. This is just what Microsoft does, right? Well, and Jeff, you know, I guess that's why, you know, if I have a favorite nemesis, it's them because oh. they just do the same thing over and over and people are sheep and they continue to accept it. They did it with music. They did it with the Zoom. They, I mean, how many, how many examples can we go through? Uh, I, well, Microsoft has a, has a modus operandi and, uh, and the modus operandi is we will do something. And then we will relentlessly do it and do it and do it until we've iterated enough that it's not crap. And uh, and uh, that's what they're doing here too. They're it's frustrating because um, so much of what they're doing right now feels like it's in the crap phase. And uh, and and then and then we look at other things like. What they're just now getting around to doing uh, Apple Silicon native version of Skype. What the um, Skype and, is gone, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Skype. It's yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> it's frustrating because because you can see where Microsoft has has good products, uh, but then you can also follow the the path backwards. And uh, and see how it w- it was not good at one point, and right now we're looking at Teams, and uh, and I don't know anyone that likes Teams, yet everyone uses it because they have their license for for all of the other Microsoft stuff, so it just gets kind of used by default, which which sounds. A, a little bit like what happened with Internet Explorer, uh, and uh, and led to some monopoly issues for the company. But the the thing is, 
it's crap right now. And, uh, and we just have to live through the frustrating phases until it gets better. And it probably will. And, and yet here we are looking at, well, they're ending the one thing, and here's the stupid stuff you have to do yeah. to be able to use the the next iteration. Now, one, one thing, this, this team's version is of the business-free, not the consumer-free. So you can still, on the consumer side of things, if not that you'd ever want to, but uh, there are people that are doing that. So just so I'd like to mention yeah. that. Please don't. Please don't. Yeah, don't use it. Web, uh, before I move on to the other couple things, um, are, are you finished your research? Still looking. But okay, still uh, looking. yeah, they, they, okay. they, and I, I don't want to, <laughs> this can go on for a long time, but you know, we, we, we talked about market structure and barriers to entry and, and uh, um, uh, uh, product substitutability is another issue. Uh, th- thank you, Wikipedia, for helping me out here tonight. Um, that's a plug. Um but uh, yeah, it, it's uh, some monopolies are, are, are government generated to uh, to um, uh, uh, public utility is a monopoly, um, and uh, so you don't have multiple electrical companies, and you get to choose which ones. Uh, uh, public safety could be considered a monopoly. Uh, it used to be that, you know, they were competing buyer companies, and, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, it all came down to which emblem you had sitting on in front of your house. If your house was on fire, which fire company was going to help you? Um, uh, so anyway, it's... Yeah. It's um, it's definitely a revenue generator, and that's how isn't that how this whole conversation started? What was Apple generated seventy eighty billion dollars from their services side? So isn't that how this topic? You know, an hour and a half ago. So it's exactly how it started. It's I had no idea. I thought that was going to be a throwaway, and we'd move on. Um, the, but this crowd, wanna, but this crowd, forget it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> we're like pit bulls. We grab on and don't let go. <laughs> so we may, so we may. I miss Jay Miller. He's <laughs> been great oh, for yeah. this conversation. Oh, oh yeah, he 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 never let anything go. Um, so on the Mastodon front, um, cloud Cloudflare now wants to give you an easy service to help you set up your own Mastodon compatible server. I oh throw that my out there. God, what I, <laughs> holy crap! <laughs> so it's it's called wildebeest, um, which I'm not sure what that says about it, but uh, I just thought this was really interesting because we've had discussions about Mastodon and companies or even people wanting to set up their own instances. Well, here you go. And There's to be lo- fair, Cloud Cloudfares Cloudfares has a pretty decent reputation, so you know that's technically that's good. Jeff? All right. So here's my concern and why I started off with with an oh my God. Um, okay. Yes, Cloudflare has a good reputation and uh, and they are good at what they do. The oh my God part is giving people a simple way to spin up a Mastodon instance is not the same as uh, as people being able to spin up a good Mastodon instance that has everything in place to properly service the people that are signing up for that instance. I have not looked into what Cloudflare is doing, but my concern is that they're giving you the first part. Here's the technical part of spinning up an instance, and then everything else that you really, really need to do to make sure that you have uh, have a proper instance. I don't know if they're doing that, and uh, and to bring it back to uh, to uh, or no to give a plug for what people are going to see later. You need to watch the Mac voices that Chuck recorded with Eric and me uh, yesterday as we record now and listen to everything that Eric says about picking a good Mastodon instance. And that's everything that uh, that I'm concerned that Cloudflare is doing. And if you're listening to this live, which we have some folks in the chat room who are, I'm planning on releasing at least the first part of that um, tomorrow as we record this. Um, and if you're if you're listening to this later, those shows will already have been out. So you'll want to go back in the feeds and listen to them. But yeah, it was a really good discussion that Jeff and Eric and I had about 
Mastodon, the instances, the apps are, that are out there and our expectations going forward. So yeah. thank you for the plug, Jeff. Well, Eric was on fire last night, and I feel like I would be doing a disservice to everyone by not pointing that out. You you really need to listen to everything he said. Yeah. He was kind of quiet tonight. I think he, uh, he he's exhausted from all the wisdom that came pouring out of him last night. <laughs> there was a lot of wisdom, so, so I could appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Collide at collide.com slash Mac Voices. Our sponsor, Collide, has some big news. If you're an Okta user, they can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. How? If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud apps until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in zero trust architecture, device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Unsecure devices are logging into your company's apps because there's nothing there to stop them. Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agent detects a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and most importantly, 100% fleet compliance. Visit collide.com slash macvoices to learn more or book a demo. That's collide, K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash macvoices. Collide.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Collide for their support of Mac Voices. Um, I, I need to get Webb back for the last story. Um, I'm here. I'm so, here. Oh, you're here? You're here? Good. He's back. Um, because I wanted to ha- make sure Webb was here for the most important story of the whole show, and we're just getting to it at the end. Um, but Webb was present for the Apple Music halftime show at the Super Bowl. And yeah. I'm, I, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm oh, by sincere. the way, Rihanna's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I am sincerely curious, Webb, because we'll leave the music alone because, you know, I don't think yeah. that's for any of us. But visually, the I mean, the production, well, the dancing was a little per- strange. But, um, but the production was really fascinating. I mean, how was it in, in person? What, what was your reaction to it? Um, yeah, it, it first of all, it, the music is not necessarily my cup of tea. Um, I thought Chris Stapleton's national anthem was amazing. Um, a lot but, of tears. Uh, yeah, um, uh, and inclu- including the the Eagles head coach got those tears out of the way early. Thank you. Um, but uh, sorry, um, you know, I when I, it, I I'm just not of a geeky nerd that that i really enjoy watching them not just the show itself but how they put it together and how they uh pull the stage out you know if, if you think about it, they got eight minutes to put that out there um that's how long that the nfl allows them to do it and then the other thing they have to do is that they can't tear up the field when they do it um field already was but that's another story <laughs> yeah um yeah the, the the yeah that's another story um the 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 getting Back to your question, I'll, I can talk about the turf later, but um, um, it, it was fascinating. Now, where I was, I was kind of on the back side, okay, so um, um, from where my seats were. So uh, I was kind of in the end zone, but on the back side of it. So um, it, it was amazing. Um, I wouldn't want to be cl- you know, sitting on one of those platforms, even if I was strapped into it and get pulled up 60, 70, 80 feet above the stadium. No, thank you. Um, you know, and here again, if you think about that, and they had six or eight of those platforms, not just one that Rihanna was on, but some with them. I think there were seven now that I think about it. Uh, remember, they can't pivot left or right, so they had to stay perfect. So I, it was a very interesting engineering feat how they did that. Um, uh, the, the show itself, it, yeah, it, it was okay. It, not my cup of tea, music-wise, but it was okay. Um, it it wasn't Ted Nugent, you know. That's yeah. an inside joke between me and Chuck. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, um, yeah, I, 
it, it was okay. It was really neat to watch them put the states together. It was really neat to watch them tear it apart and, and get it back away. Um, and uh, you know, they pre- if you know anything about that stadium, that the 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 turf, all jokes aside, is on a platform. They take that platform with the turf on it and they slide it out to really kind of what you think would be part of the parking lot. And so that's where the, the grass gets sun and water and all that other kinds of stuff. That's where they pre-staged the, the, the halftime show was there. Um, so it, it was interesting how they got it all in and out and so on and so forth. So, but the, the show is okay. Um, the staging was magnificent. The, the production value was really interesting. Um, uh, has anybody yeah. seen? Um, is, there, is there something on YouTube or something to like behind the scenes so that those of us that weren't there could see? You know, I, and I saw a number of people online saying, oh, "I would have much rather seen them set up that stage than you know listen to the boring recap of the first half." Um, well, next year I'll see? make sure to pull out my camera and I'll, I'll videotape it when the Roy- when the Chiefs go back again. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it won't be in that stadium, and it won't. <laughs> No, they'll be in well, a, yeah, a, a, a Raiders there stadium. Must have been lots of people. Lots of people. Um, oh, is it? Is that where it's going to be next year? Yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. I I was anxious. I, I mean, yeah, we. You know, look. Let's face. Let's just face it. Look around this group. This group is not the target audience for that particular kind of music. Um, I did recognize so, two songs. Oh, gee, I thought they were all just one song. She's got at line. least ten number one hits. Yeah, she has some yeah. good music. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, anyway. I, I have a very wide uh, uh, musical taste. Maybe. I do too. I like to think I do, but apparently I don't. Um, but you know, just I, I have to say the it ordinarily. I mean, in the past, this kind of show would have just yeah, I'd have gone to the kitchen for pizza. But I, this one, I really was intrigued just to watch. You know, the the staging and the the effect I could have watched with the with the music off, with the sound off, but it was visually stunning. It really was. So, if if you haven't seen it, I don't know. I'm sure there there have to be videos of it out there. Um, so it's it's worth going and just seeing just for the spectacle. They had a uh, dedicated Skycam just for that for that show too. So, which I, right. I was wondering yeah. about that. I was yeah. wondering about that because I was, was like. They couldn't be using the regular one. That would have to be gotten out of the way for, you know, those things to be flying up there. Except that the games got cam, yeah, and the, the wire. Yeah. Well, didn't I mean, they say this was a longer uh, halftime than normal? 26 29 minutes. minutes. It was 29 minutes. And yet, um, she only performed for, what, 13, 14? Something like, yeah. Yeah, so the rest of the time, I guess, was dedicated to set up and tear down. Yeah, uh, eight minutes going up and six minutes coming down. So, yeah, impressive. Any way you take it. Yeah, but uh, from from the production value, um, it was pretty neat to watch. So, yeah. So, are you signing autographs, Web? Nope. Okay. Nope. But but tomorrow's the parade, and uh, I will be sitting in my office watching the parade on my TV. So, there you go. Good. Good. You deserve it. it was, I, I I know at least one person here is not into football, but I I thought it was a really good game. It it was. I think Philadelphia got out co- out coached. That's the way no, I saw it. It, it was a great game. Yeah, it, it, and I said it on on the, on the Slack uh, channel that we had. It's that if you look at the numbers, the Eagles won the game, except for one very important stat, and that was. The team with the most points at the end of the game is the winner, exactly. and, the, and the Chiefs won it. There, there's not a lot of argument about the holding call, whether it was a valid holding call or not. Mm. It was the only holding call in the entire game, which I thought was interesting. Um, but uh, a, a friend of mine, actually a, a former executive of mine, is a retired head linesman for the NFL. And he, oh. he, he reached out to me today, and he goes, like it or not, it was a hold, and they threw the flag because it was a hold. You don't let them oh. play when when they break oh. the rule. It was a hold. I think you want to go down that rat hole there, Chuck. <laughs> no, it was a hold. Yeah, yeah. We may save that for after dark because I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have I have thoughts on it too. Um, so, so but as someone, we won. It was a hold. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. There, there we go. Thank you for answering my question. The team that Webb wanted to see win won. So hooray for you, Webb. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. If you exactly. don't believe me, you can ask my wife. I'll go get her. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I know you were both there because I saw the photos of you together. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the yeah. way, I did make the Fox pregame broadcast. So Oh, did you? I'm nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I I asked Webb in the Slack to tell me what you know what he'd be wearing so I could help you know maybe see him on TV and he said he'd be the one with the chief shirt on. It's like and he was. Well, thank you. I Webb. saw the photos. Yeah. He yeah. was. Yeah. Are um, these yeah. pictures in the Slack? Because I didn't. I missed them. No, I no no no. He just it was said, on Facebook. Chuck, Chuck so, asked, Yeah. Sh- showing more of my sports ignorance. Now, so now the, I'm so the Chiefs is the team that Webb likes, and that's the team that won. Yep. Right. Okay. Well, they're from Kansas City, so. Totally on, that note, <laughs> on that note, on that note, we're going to wrap this. Um, hey guys, thank you very much. This has been uh, a good discussion. As always, it starts one place, and I never, it never ends up where I think it's going to. So, um, and that's part of the fun of it. Um, so let's go around the room and find out where everybody is. And things have gotten jostled up a little bit because cameras have been turned on and off. Yep. So now um, Eric Bolden is in the seat of the Angels. Eric, great to have you. Thank you so much for the discussion last night and for your you're in recovery tonight. Um, where can folks find you? Um, I'm on Mastodon, EA Bolden at techhub.social. Great. Thank you. Jeff Gamut. Thank you so much for being here as always and for last night's conversation as well, which will be tomorrow's conversation in my timeline, but I don't know about the rest of the world. Uh, Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Yeah. (laughs) Where can folks find you, Jeff? Uh, Well, first, thanks for letting me on. And uh, and it was so great to get to hang out with with you and Eric last night. And uh, and I'm looking forward to everyone else getting to to be a part of that when when you drop the show. All right, where can you find me? Um, I'm Jay Gamut on the the various social platforms. The ones I'm active on right now are Mastodon and Instagram. And um, uh, and then for podcasts here on Tuesdays with, with you, Chuck, and then on uh, Thursdays on the big show, and then Thursday evenings on Dave's In Touch with iOS, and then Fridays on the Mac show, and also on the Context Machine with Brent Chaffin. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Jim Ray, uh, when you come in for, uh, for Splashdown, uh, where will folks be able to find you? Uh, well, you can find me out in space at uh, proview.com, P R O V U E, and there'll be a space <laughs> backdrop just, you know, just like this. Um, in fact, let me, uh, in a second. And, and then um, uh, also you can find me on Mastodon at uh, Proview Gym. Um, see, here's my same background, but with the commercial. Um, uh, Pro V Gym at techhub.social because I listen to Eric as to what instance to pick. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I told you, Eric, just dispensing all that wisdom. No question about it. David Ginsburg, thank you for being here. Uh, where can folks find you? Thanks. You, thank you for having me. Find me at in touch with iOS at in touch with iOS.com, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash in touch with iOS. I'm on Mastodon at uh, Mastodon.cloud at DFG65. I'm on Twitter, too, but go to Mastodon. Thanks. I like the way David has started adopting Guy Searle's, um, you know, 70s DJ voice uh, as, okay. as he does his, yeah. his hey, intros. You know, I, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how this happened, David, <laughs> but you, know, you hang around in bad company, you know, <laughs> and Guy's not even here. I know. Last but absolutely not least, the Super Bowl guy himself, Mr. Webb Bixby. Webb, thanks so much for uh, for coming and sharing and discussing and arguing. Uh, where can folks find you? Yeah, the the best place is uh, here again on Mastodon. I've adopted that, and it's uh, Webb Bixby at twit.social. Excellent. Thank you, Webb. A special thank you to uh, everyone who showed up on this Valentine's Day show in the chat room. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, a lot of good conversations. I couldn't get to all the comments because things were moving too fast. Um, but we really appreciate you all being here, too, as always. Um, 
Until the next time, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices Live, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, youtube.com slash Mac Voices TV. Those are the facts. You just need to be here, show up, and participate because we always have a great time. Happy Valentine's Day, wherever you are, whatever time it is, you, wherever you are, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy Frederick Douglass birthday. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.